Hello and welcome back to Miracle Analysis. So, uh, today isn't really a lecture, but it's really a discussion about the uh, project I just signed in my class. Um, so, if you're in my class, uh, you've gotten so far two homework assignments, one for Taylor series and one for interpolating polynomials. The uh, Taylor series, uh, I just uploaded a video uh, going over that. I used a little bit in MATLAB to answer some questions. Uh, on the exam, you'll ex be expected to answer a lot of these questions by hand, but I wouldn't ask you to take like 20 derivatives or 30 derivatives that you need to do for the, the homework. It'd just be like, if it's something fairly explicit, like, you know, if, yeah, find the accuracy of the second order Taylor polynomial, uh, yeah, with a, um, you yeah, know, for something that's straightforward. Um, Anyway, uh, and then you'd have to take maybe at most three derivatives and find the maximum of that, something like that. Um, okay, so uh, but I also assigned a project and uh, some of the students, uh, some of you guys have expressed uh, some anxiety about it because it's the first MATLAB project we've had. And, um, and so I figured I would go ahead and, uh, and walk you through it. It's really not as bad as it seems. Um, in fact, I've already given you a lot of the code to do this. And so let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, so I'm starting with screen recording so I can uh, put this up. Uh, okay, all right, screen recording going. Okay, so um, I have a whole bunch of notes on top here. It says, uh, basically these are the goals. I want you to uh, do an approximation for some sort of shifted interval of uh, the Bernstein uh, polynomial. So right here. Um, now, the, the idea is that um, I've already actually showed you how to uh, do Bernstein polynomial approximations on zero to one. And then I even extended the idea to show you how to extend it from say zero to some T, I think it was six or something for sine and cosine. And so um, so the only thing that's left there is to shift it away from zero. So shift it to A, um, you yeah, know, so, so you can do an arbitrary, uh, say like uh, two to five or something like that. And, uh, and here I have one to two, zero to 10, 0 to 5 and negative 2 to 2. And so I basically want you to be able to manipulate the approximation scheme that I already gave you. Same code, you can even copy and paste the code as much as you need, uh, and, um, and then implement the Bernstein polynomial approximation. And so there's one thing to figure out there, and that's how to shift the things around, and that, that's up to you. I think I, I'll even put it into the Bernstein homework, if you'd like. Um, so uh, one that you need to do almost from scratch is the Lagrange interpolating polynomials. So we've already discussed how to do a uh, polynomial interpolation using van der Waals matrices, using uh, Newton's divided differences, and, and Newton's uh, interpolating polynomials. Um, and so the Grange interpolating polynomials is yet another way of doing the same thing. And so, uh, so I'd like you to do that. And so basically, it's, uh, you have to implement a product in the numerator and divided by a product in the denominator. And, um, and in order to do those products, I've actually kind of already given you the code if you look at uh, Newton's uh, method polynomials. It's sort of similar to that, and it's different. You'll have to figure out how it's different. But, um, but yeah, so that, that's probably the most challenging thing in here. Um, I so then the next one, I want you to compare derivatives of the interpolant and f. And so, um, so basically, once you find a polynomial approximation, you can use van der Waals matrix however you want. You get a, a whole collection of coefficients and polynomials, and uh, and then you need to take a derivative of that polynomial compared to the derivative of the original function. Uh, if you want to get a derivative for a polynomial, you just need to replace xn with n times xn minus one, and then today you have a, a derivative. And so you just uh, change each one of those polynomial terms uh, to to that, and then it'll give you a, a derivative. And so that, that's actually straightforward. Uh, so I recommend using Van Vaughn's uh, approach there because it gives you explicitly the um, xn basis and then you can just change xn to xn, that's to n times xn minus one and you have a derivative. Um, and then uh, I want you to compare all these approximation schemes uh, and um, and then give us a table. Uh, when I say print a table, I don't mean actually print a table. I mean like just display a table in MATLAB, uh, and that you're gonna have to do some finagling with. Um, and uh, and then I also want you to be able to do a Taylor series centered at arbitrary a. I can't remember if I just did Taylor series centered at zero. This this code might already be there, and if it is, ta-da, you win. Um, but okay, so what are the things that we need to do? And so basically, uh, here I say in part one, modify the MATLAB code uh, f 
from class to be able to do the following. So find a Taylor polynomial for a function centered at point A, interpolate a function using a Lagrange polynomials, and construct a Bernstein polynomial approximation of a function over an interval A, B. Okay, so those are, these are the first three things that you need to do. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so here I'll get, you should be, take some input A, B and be able to, to do it. And so you should make these each like their own kind of file if you want. So .m file for each of these. Um, now for the part two, this is where I actually want you to implement all this stuff. So I want you to approximate the following functions using polynomials of degree n for each of the methods studied. Um, and so uh, here uh, we have f of x equals square root of x. Um, and we have f you know, over say one to two and zero to 10. And then, um, and then for the Taylor polynomials, uh, because that's, you know, uh, we have 1.5 and 5, um, just as the center points. And so I'm just picking the, the center right in the middle of all that. And so, uh, so yeah, and then here, um, it gave you uh, sine minus cosine, more or less. And then I get e to the minus x, and so all these guys should converge pretty quick. These guys might have a little bit of issue, um, and uh, and that's because uh, square root of x has a vertical asymptote, uh, or the derivative of square root of x has a vertical asymptote at uh, the origin. So, uh, so that'll definitely screw this up. It might still work out okay here, though. Um, but it's something I have to play with. So I didn't give you a specific end to do it with. Um, what I'd like you to do is just give me like a whole bunch of examples. So give me n equals uh, 2, 5, 20. And so for Taylor polynomials, that's easy. You just take the 20th Taylor polynomial and then present that. Um, for the, um, but I want you to compare the 20th Taylor polynomial with a polynomial degree and that's an interpolating polynomial. And there you just uh, take, uh, say, uniform samples uh, uniformly spaced samples over the, each of these intervals, and you have code for that uh, from all the examples I gave you already. So that's not too bad. Um, and, uh, and so then, yeah, so then for each one of these things, uh, plot all the approximations and the original function on the same axis and make a new figure for each one of one, two, three, four. All right, so, uh, so then, you know, basically for a polynomial of degree five, I want you to go ahead and take this guy and, uh, and implement Bernstein polynomial approximation function interpolation and uh, and uh, Taylor series there uh, of using you know say polynomials of degree five and uh, and then take it up from there uh, and so uh, and if you're doing a Taylor polynomial degree five remember you need six interpolation points um, and so uh, so yeah so then you uh, just I uh, give me you know say several examples of higher and higher degree polynomials. Uh, it'll probably break down after you get up to 100 or so, just from computational round-off errors. Um, but yeah, but it's something that you can do there. And uh, and so then uh, here I get a lot more explicit about the derivative thing, and I already kind of talked about this, but basically I want you to, uh, using the interpolation method with van der Waals matrices, uh, find an interpolating polynomial for each of the above functions, and take a derivative of this, poly of this polynomial and compare it to the derivative of the original function. So you, can, you know the derivative of the original functions already, uh, because you know the derivative of square root of x, you know the derivative of sine and cosine and, and the exponential function. And so uh, so that should be straightforward. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so then, you know, same sort of scheme. Uh, you know, take a uh, polynomial of degree 5, 10, 20, etc. And, uh, and just give me a, a plot of each of these um, of these comparisons with the derivative. And, uh, and yeah, and that, that would be the first project. Um, Okay, so uh, so yeah, that hopefully uh, this has cleared up any confusion. Uh, I'm sorry if it wasn't specific enough before, um, but yeah. I, in any case, I, I'm here if you need me. If you run into any trouble, um, the code uh, you're free to use any of the code snippets I've given you, uh, and um, and if you need help with anything else, just send me an email. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna stop this, and uh, yeah, uh, thanks for listening.